All right, two minutes till. Well, if you're uh, joining us a little early here, uh, this is our Force Iowa's Artful Connections. This will be a semi-instructional video. Um, haven't been doing a lot of drawing on here. I did kind of a jump start on this one. Um, in part because I wasn't sure it would even show up on the camera. Uh, so hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. It'll be easier to see as I go along. Um, and uh, I've been working on some portrait commissions lately, so I thought, well, I was going through all my old photos and just trying to see if I had anything that would be relevant, and I thought about doing a portrait study, but then I saw this skull photo, and I thought, oh, we'll do a skull. Skull will be cool. So um, I'll be working in colored pencil today, and uh, I encourage you to work along with me. Uh, I'll also be using pastel, so I'll be doing kind of a mixed media thing uh, today. What I have done already is just sort of a sketch of... Um, of the skull. Um, in part, also, I wanted to give this a jump start because I'm really tired and I didn't really want to warm up on camera. Um, so I've got kind of my general gist out. Now, as I was drawing this, the main things I was keeping in mind were just trying to keep my parallels. Now, I am looking at kind of an asymmetrical skull. But, you know, in general, trying to keep things uh, in line with each other. So I set up my parallels, and I don't know if those will show up on camera, but they are there, um, our parallel lines. And um, as I'm going, I'm also, uh, of course, making uh, vertical lines as well, just seeing, like, where do, what does this intersect with, comparing it to my reference if I drew an imaginary line straight up. Same thing with, like, any little moment of transition, like right here in this corner, where does it intersect? On the eye, does it line up with my reference, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, I also kind of like to outline my shadows and highlights when I'm drawing, it, in part because I um, it helps to make a map of what you'll be doing. But also, I, I kind of like the way these look on the final piece. But um, it can it can be handy if you're just trying. To, you can always eliminate these kinds of marks later. It can just be handy for building up the piece. So um, I think we're in a position now where I can start working on bringing in some color. Um, so the temptation with something like this, so like uh, with a skull, the temptation is going to be like uh, when I get to the eye sockets to uh, basically just kind of like color them in and make them just kind of one solid color. Um, in the nose, if I was working live, I think I'd be able to pull more detail out. That is kind of how this is going to look, because I don't have that much information on my photograph in the nose. But in the eye socket, uh, there actually is a little bit of information, and it'll be a much more interesting drawing if we can capture that. So yeah, we're, we're, we won't be giving into the temptation of just letting that be uh, a dark socket. Now, um, whenever you're wondering, like, man, how do I establish my contrast here. Um, one thing you can do is you can squint, and squinting will tend to intensify your lights and your darks. Um, so we'll want to make sure that we keep this pretty dark, but I want to make sure I don't make it so dark that um, I don't have any information in here. So something I'm going to start doing is just kind of carving in some of our shadows. I think we're on time. I think we can start now, right? Yeah, we're on time. So, um, as I'm doing this, I am considering um, line direction a little bit. Line direction should be describing uh, the planes, you know, as the planes come forward and cut under, you know, that sort of shelf. Um, we want to make sure our lines are sort of describing that surface. So for instance, if I have a line that's, or I have a plane that's flat right here, but then it's gonna curve like where the shadow is, I wanna make sure that this part is going straight up and down. And then the line will curve a little bit this way. Um, 
But I think before we get too deep into that, I use paper towels for this. I also have stumps, um, blending stumps, and uh, <laughs> uh, also quite a few Q-tips. Uh, so, like, I think what I'm going to be doing right now is going to be using the uh, paper towel. And we're just going to lay down kind of some broad stroke color changes. So, for instance, I was trying to decide what color I want my shadows to be. I'm tempted to use this little, I have a little pink piece of pastel here. I'm tempted to use that. Um, and if you're just joining us, um, this is Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco, and we're doing um, a small study of a skull today. You might hear my cat. She's um, wandering around the house. She's an old kitty. She has a lot to say. Um, but uh, yeah, I encourage you to draw along with me. If you are drawing along with me, we'd love to see what you've made today at the end. If you want to post it in the comments. If you're just hanging out, that's also totally cool. Stoked to have you. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, what I'm going to be doing now is laying down kind of a base, base shadow color. Let's start with purple and see how that feels. Yeah, so that's not so bad. That's a little lighter than I want, though. And it's not quite as dark as I want, or not quite as um, bright as I want, rather. So, by bright, I guess I just mean saturated. So let's actually go in with the pink like I was thinking before. We're gonna do this with pink. Yeah, I kind of like that better. It's a little bit obnoxious, but that's sort of my style these days is keeping things obnoxious. Obviously, you know, if you guys want to work in natural color, I can't encourage you enough to do that. Um, but hypersaturated has been kind of my MO lately and it just feels really good to do that. And so I'm going to go with that. Um, not being super discerning here, um, kind of following some of my lines. Uh, this is going to get colored in. I'm trying to decide right now if I'll be doing that with, yeah, you know what, let's do, I have a, a slightly different shade of purple here. Um, also a pastel. I'm doing pastel before colored pencil because colored pencil will go over pastel but pastel has a harder time going over colored pencil. That's not like a hard rule, but it, I've found it to be true with the materials I'm using, which um, I have a couple different brands of pastel in this tin. Um, but uh, for colored pencil, I use Karat and Dash. I used to use Prismacolor quite a bit like um, so many people do, but in the end, I found they were a little greasy. Karan Dash is a little more, it's softer and a bit more malleable and a bit more erasable. And I like to draw with my eraser. Um, as you'll see, we'll be doing a bit of that. Um, and yeah, just kind of coloring in. Also, I thought maybe if I start jump started this, we'd have more of a chance of actually finishing something on one of these streams, which I'm not promising because you never know how these things are going to go. But um, I'm going to try. I have a habit of fussing around. If you're um, just joining us, though, uh, my name is Jonathan Fusco. This is Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. And uh, I haven't done a drawing on here, I don't think, yet. I think I've always been painting, which is uh, in part because I thought it's easier to photograph. Like, it, it picks up, it's picked up by the camera a little easier. Um, but I feel like you can see this pretty good. Um, I'm looking at the screen right now, I feel like you can see this pretty good. It took me a little while to figure out where the heck to put my uh, gorilla tripod. Cause that's what you guys are on right now. But, um, yeah, just kind of getting some color everywhere. Don't need to be, nothing is final. Uh, but yeah, starting with pastel, it doesn't mean that we can't do pastel later, actually. Um, and in fact, for like the really bright spots, uh, I have a white pastel that does go over colored pencil okay, but especially for these like broad areas, 
instead of just little bright highlights, uh, like just laying color down, um, we want to do this first. So, yeah. Yep, that's what we want. Cool. So, um, what next? I think what I'm going to do, I have, um, actually this is also Cron Dash. This is a pastel pencil. Um, I like the colored pencils for what we'll be doing later, but I think I'm just going to carve out some highlights just to kind of protect them and just remind me I'm going to need them there later. Um, yeah, um, and I think too, what we'll do, start removing where we'll be putting color later. If you're just joining us, Heartful Connections, Jonathan Fusco. Um, if you're drawing along with us, we would love to see what you've done today. Um, please do share in the comments. If you're just hanging out, that's cool too. And if you've joined me before, um, this is a different camera, so hopefully this looks a little better than it normally does. That's the hope. One nice thing about paper towels is you can kind of make them into a little stump. Um, yeah, it doesn't actually move around as much. Um, the pastel pencils, they're not quite as soft as the sticks. But we're just building up a little history. Um, there's going to be a lot of push and pull um, on this. And that is just fine. What I'm curious about is some of these things, I'm curious if they'll even show up. Oh, they do! They show up on the camera. That's great. All right, this one in particular, I wondered if it would show up. That's awesome that you can see that. Okay. I mean, I don't know what the... I don't know what your uh, resolution's like, but I can see it on my... Screen. Um, if at any time you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I can see the screen this time, which is very exciting. But again, if you're just hanging out with me today, that's totally cool. Um, so yeah, we got our pink skull pretty well started now. Pretty good start. And... I like drawing skulls, in particular because they, they're deceptively... You can get pretty comfortable drawing them, but um, there's a lot happening, if you're not careful, that you might miss. I'm just going to build up a little more history in here. But it's just going to be kind of a matter of pushing darks, shoving those in, and pulling out our highlights. Um, I am working on toned paper. Um, mostly that's all I have. I don't. I haven't really bought white paper in a while. At some point, I just decided that I didn't really like starting from that extreme. It's just like nice to start from a nice neutral tone, and then work out towards your bright work, um, in towards your darks. You know. Um, there was a time it felt a little like cheating, but I suppose starting with a bright white paper is kind of like cheating too. So it just depends how you look at it, and. Um, yeah, all these techniques, though, work just fine on white paper. Um, you just would be using less of the bright colors to pull out your um, brighter spots. You'd be using a lot more dark to try and create that um, shadow. But n n nothing I'm talking about requires toned paper. Uh, just when I decide to use certain colors will change. And we wouldn't, um, and yeah, and then of course our base ground would be white. 
but I think colored pencil works particularly well on toned paper, um, as does pastel. Um, whenever I'm painting, too, one of the first things I like to try and do is establish um, kind of a mid-tone. <laughs> That's right, you do, don't you? Awesome. Oh, I'm so glad it's on the wall. Um, if you ever feel like sending me a photo of where you hang it, I'm always stoked to see where the stuff I've made has landed. That was a fun little study. That was actually the Art Force Iowa skull. Uh, this is an actual human skull that a friend of mine has that I have I'm lucky enough to have caught a couple photos of. Um, I'm, it's like kind of a creepy thing to own, I suppose, but I have to confess I'm pretty jealous. Uh, they're not, they're not cheap <laughs> uh, by any stretch. But uh, so that's why we're working from a photo today. The fake skulls are fine. You can get quite a bit from them, but there is like a lot of really gnarly little details about like an actual natural skull. I have quite a few animal skulls, and uh, you get a lot of the same benefit from working from an animal skull, except without that personal connection of, goodness, that looks kind of like the inside of my face. Sort of effect that you get working from human skull. But yeah, it seemed appropriate. I have a lot of portrait work coming up. And I'm kind of um, out of practice on portraits, so I thought this would be a good warm-up. And also, my easel's taken up right now with, with one of those portraits, and I can't show you that because it's for a client. And you never know, maybe they'll tune in. And I don't think, I don't think the person who's getting it knows they're getting it, so you gotta keep You gotta keep it secret. Although I don't actually think they would see it on here. It's just one of those things though. Keep it under wraps. And the less I have to rearrange my studio for these videos, the better. I'm just glad you can kind of see. And, and actually tell me, let me know please uh, in the comments if you can't see, if, um, if I'm wrong and that my, my uh, sample video that I can see is not indicative of what you guys can see. Because, yeah, if, if this doesn't work, I won't do a drawing again in the future. So, um, what am I doing? So, I uh, my early drawing, um, I was working pretty light. Um, and I'm just kind of going around reestablishing all my contours. I'm checking it against my reference. here yeah like these little broken thing here is so cool you don't get that with the with the fake ones the fake ones don't typically get as damaged but yeah I kind of want to start figuring out yeah these hard Oof, you know what, that actually needs to come up. So I might regret having drawn that line that dark, but let's just see if we can get it to a race. If not, um, I'm going to be coloring that in anyway, so I should be able to mask it. But that was a little bit of a... Whoops. But we should be okay. All right, so... Um... Uh, yeah, as I'm going, uh, to make sure, especially with stuff like this, like where there's like a transition moment, like that curve right there, um, I just, um, I'm checking my reference to make sure that if I drew an imaginary line across the skull, uh, does it line up at the same spot? Um, and I also want to make sure that my parallel line lines up with the other one on the other side. And I think it does. I think we're okay. Uh, symmetry is something that I think most people struggle with with drawing, and I am no exception. Um, it can be pretty hard. I actually do keep a, um, a mirror around, which you can see the shadow of right here. 
uh, if ever I've been looking at something too long and I can't see it anymore, um, having like a hand mirror, you can look in the mirror and it'll flip the drawing for you. And it's a little bit easier uh, to see anywhere you might have gone amiss. So just something to keep in mind, because uh, that is one of the harder things, I think, in drawing. Is symmetry comes up a lot in um, portraiture too, like making sure you have your eyeballs both facing the same direction. Just mirrors just make it easier. I, I know plenty of artists who don't use mirrors and they they they've done just fine without them. But I, I I have leaned on them. My I learned about that in high school, so I've I've been using them that whole time. But I do know of a lot of really talented people who have never used mirrors, and it blows my mind because I can't imagine. Not relying on them. Um, cool. So uh, this is going to be kind of a fun transition. So this is the part where it really becomes an eye socket. But there is this cool little shelf right in here that uh, we get to describe. It's sort of the counterpoint to the bright spot over here, which I'm going to just carve a little bit of line work into. I think we'll outline that too, just for fun. Cool. Cool, cool. All right, just establishing some hard boundaries. Always establish boundaries in life and in drawing. Okay. Bam. Healthy boundaries. So I know this is going to get pretty dark. Um, what I'm trying to decide now is just how dark my darkest dark is going to be. Because um, really it's up to you. Um, in the photo, it's pert near black. I won't be, I won't be making it black. Um, I know that because I just kind of don't like working in black. I prefer to use colors to describe my shadows as much as I can. Even in painting, um, I prefer to mix black so that it has a little bit of um, uh, hue to it. In the same way, I don't really like using pure white either. Um, I just feel like you kind of limit yourself a bit. Now, having said that, charcoal is obviously just a balance of white and black, and um, that's cool. I just don't work in charcoal that much. Just really enjoy. I just really enjoy the colored midtones. But nothing wrong with it. it just, for me, it, it kind of just feels like it's missing a whole dimension. Actually, this needs to lift up. I used to work in black and white a lot more often, and I might again someday. But right now, it just doesn't feel right. If you're just joining me, my name is Jonathan Fusco. This is Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. Semi instructional video on a little skull study here. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, if you're drawing along with me, I'd love to see what you're making. All of us at Art Force would. Please do post it in the comments if you're drawing along with me. Otherwise, stoked to have you. Thanks for hanging out. Happy Monday.
So one nice thing about these little stumps is sometimes they have leftover color on them and I kind of try to establish like different stump to have different for different colors and I, I've been using kind of a, a samey palette for a lot of stuff but yeah if you just want to like color something in like almost like a marker I can kind of just use the leftover pigment from that and um, try to draw with it like that. Cool. I think, I think, um, I put my arm in front of my, when I did that, I put my arm in front of the reference and I couldn't see anymore, even though that felt like the most comfortable way to make that mark, but that's fine. Um, more important that you can see your reference, because the longer you spend looking away from it, the more you're just drawing what you think it looks like, or what you hope it looks like, instead of what it actually looks like. And um, generally speaking, there's going to be a lot more interesting things going on in the reference itself, so it's best to keep your eye on the reference. I had an instructor who always said you should look at your reference at least as long as you look at your drawing. I honestly find that pretty hard, but I think it's worth striving for. Um, so we'll be striving for that here today. I have kind of a neat little, it's like a, what do they call it? What does it consider itself? It considers itself rouge or purplish red. Um, will it focus or no? Well, it says purplish red right there. I haven't used this color that much. I thought this would be cool for shadows today. So we already have that base of pastel. So the color pencil goes over the pastel without too much trouble. But um, the opposite's a little harder. Particularly pastel pencil doesn't want to go over colored pencil. So I try to use pastel pencil in areas where I haven't used a lot of colored pencil. Or I try and use it before. And you'll notice I switch line direction here. I was coming in like this, but then as the plane shifts, as it curves around, pop, pop, uh, I shift the angle of the mark just a little bit. Um, the color doesn't change much in the reference, but I am going to change it a little bit um, just to emphasize that turn. I had a little bit of a jump start today for those of you who joined me a little late. I had the base of the skull mostly drawn out. Um, that way we could spend a lot of time exploring. Color and shifting light and shade. And uh, yeah, when I'm switching colors, um, I'm honestly not always thinking that much about it. Um, I kind of have an idea of like what I want my shadow colors to be and if it doesn't work where I put it then I just do something else but I have like these three in one hand and in my other hand I have my outliner which today is red and then I have a kind of a pale pink and then a pale yellow for my highlights um, so I just kind of keep all these in my hand and every now and again I'm just kind of grabbing one uh, and I just switched to this purple to see if it would work up here and it does kind of um, uh, and in, in part, I'm doing that because sometimes really interesting things happen, but I will confess to you, I don't always have a plan. And uh, it might be sometimes that it just doesn't work, and then you just kind of either erase it or go over it with something else that works better. Draw a little imaginary line 
straight across here. Yeah, so that's where my transition is, which means I overshot it a little bit earlier. So let's kind of just zip, clean that up. Bam. I do erase. I am an eraser. I like to draw with my eraser about as much as I like to fix my mistakes. It is just a really useful tool. There is no shame in erasing. There are some people out there who, if you were to take a class with them, they would have you draw in pen for a while to get you to stop leaning on the eraser. It's true, you probably shouldn't lean on the eraser too hard. Uh, because if you spend all your time erasing, you're not really drawing anymore. And frankly, I kind of like some of my missed marks. Like, I'm not going to get rid of all of these. These are search marks from earlier. Um, there are some up here, kind of that fuzzy edge. Those are searching marks as well. Um, we don't hate those. We're going to keep those. They're not so bad. Um, trying to see... There's a thing that's happening right here that I need to make sure that I capture where like this plane comes in front and like kind of folds over. I just want to make sure I capture that. Because yeah, that's going to be kind of neat. It is warm in this studio, my friends. It's a warm sunshine and day. We've had some pretty beautiful weather, even if it's been hot. grateful for that. Especially with everything going on, it's nice that people aren't getting rained on. On top of everything else. So... Cool. But you can kind of see what I mean, I'm hoping. You know, it's just that push and pull. We do this with the paintings too. Um, so it can be a little slower drawing, but I think drawing is a... I'm, I'm a little more precise with a pencil, at least. I was going to say it's a more precise medium, but I don't know that that's objectively true, but it's largely been true for my experience with it. Um, it's just nice to plant your hand. Um, one thing you can do, though, if you are, um, get to a point where, like, you're just smearing, you actually, you might see, I have a little, I have a little color on my hand, and I haven't been that worried about it yet, uh, because not, nothing on here is really all that final, but something you can do is, I, right here, I have a piece of mat board. It can also be cardboard, simply use sticks, but, like, it won't smear if you hold it there, and, um, you can kind of, uh, Plant your hand without smearing and make your mark. Okay. Like so. So I do like to keep one of these handy. And you'll notice there's not really, these are from an old drawing, but there's not really that many marks on it. It's, um, and yeah, it doesn't have to be matte board, but I like the matte board because it's stiff and doesn't want to shift. But any, anything you can find that will just hold to the paper and won't uh, move around on you. Uh, if you're having problems with smearing, especially if you're using more pastel than I'm using. I like to use the pastel mostly to kind of, because a colored pencil alone kind of leaves that, I don't really know what to call it, that just that pencil texture, and I'm, that is not my favorite quality of colored pencil, uh, especially for filling in spaces like right in here. Uh, so, so it kind of helps to smooth that out. Um, I've also experimented with marker and color, uh, watercolor as well. There are also really great ways to kind of balance out that sort of broken quality of colored pencil. But yeah, just like coming in and uh, pastel's pretty good about filling that in. And again, I have a stump that's dedicated to my purples. And the stumps are cheap, they're handy. Uh, I used to never use stumps, but I've come around. They're the best. They really are. 
Uh, you can even kind of sharpen them with a with a sandpaper. Um, if you're using a lot of pastel, I do recommend wearing a dust mask. Um, probably should be doing that more than I do. Just because pigment is not your friend, a lot of them, and uh, when that stuff gets in the air, yeah, it's not what you want. Cool. So let's get bold. We only have a half hour left. Let's get bold. I'm going to just start making some marks all over, just looking for my shadows. Um, I'm doing a lot of squinting to help me establish, you know, just to remember like, oh, who's the, who's the darkest, who's the, who's the middlest. Um, and also it's going to be handy when it comes to doing the highlights here in a little bit. Um, and I need to bring, you know what, I actually should do this now. I need to bring this up a hair. I think. Yeah. yeah. Just a little bit there. That, that is not unimportant. Clean that up a hair. All right. So, and I did erase that because I just want to make a little more room for this part. So I'm being protective in here, because um, I do need it to be dark. But the darkest part is in the back. And I'm interested in maintaining some storytelling here. So I have this kind of pinkish color. I'm going to try that. Um, otherwise, I also have a slightly darker, it's like a pinkish red. Um, but I, I want to make sure that there's some information of like the inside lip because otherwise, ooh, you know what, maybe that is the color. Maybe it's just going to be this red color. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, you just have two black flat holes, which, yeah, that's what's happening down here. I just can't see much. I think if I was working live with the skull, it would be different, but it's a photo and that the photo just has no information in there. Um, yeah, just I'm trying to develop everything kind of evenly, same rules whenever we've done. You, if you've been with me with uh, the paintings in the past, um, I just I just want to try and deal with everything somewhat evenly, so nothing gets overdeveloped and nothing is underdeveloped, or at least nothing is um, yeah, nothing stands out really is what I'm getting at. Um, refresh my screen here. Okay. But this does need to get quite a bit darker. So does that. Cool. And actually, I guess now, now that's one reason why we do this evenly is that as soon as I made that way darker, it's like, oh, this has to get darker now, too. This is one of my favorite dark colors. What is this? Lilac? Yeah, lilac. Which is, the word lilac, to me, does not conjure up a dark purple, but that's what they made it, so. Yeah, I can't recommend Karan Dash enough. They're, they're not, like, the cheapest pencils, but... I mean, if you work with a limited palette the way I do, they won't they won't kill you. 
Um, if you're trying to get absolutely every color with them, then yeah, not probably not the most cost-effective choice. But I don't have any interest in that anyway. I've just been kind of building up my collection of them slowly over time, anyhow. So we need to do something right here. Pardon my stool creaking every time I adjust my weight even slightly. I had another stool in here and it's even creakier, believe it or not. So I, I switched it out because I, I have two short stools and I use the short stools for this table. Um, they, they both creak. Um, if I ever started a YouTube channel, I would have the first thing I'd have to invest in. Or like a Twitch stream, like uh, our very own. Cody Sherman does. I think um, I think I would have to get a new stool. I don't think the internet would. I mean, you you know you you are the internet right now, so you you know. I don't think they would. I mean, that's Bush League. This is a Bush League stool. And let's get in here. That's the color, so we're going to just sort of bring in a little more right there. I don't know if you can hear those sirens, but something's going on outside. Is it just me or have there been a lot of sirens around Des Moines, those of you who are in Des Moines? which I just assumed was most of you. It seems like there's been a lot of sirens. Small wonder, I suppose. Um, oh, I'm just so glad this is showing up on the camera. I wasn't sure it would. I did a... I tried to do a video once with a drawing and it just didn't quite pan out, but this camera is a little better as part of it. And I found a light that's just going to show up a little better with the reds, too. Turns out white light. Um, like that almost, it's almost, where it almost looks kind of blue. Uh, it's, the camera can see red better than with your standard, like, yellowy lights that you have around your house. Unless you've just filled your house with those blue lights. I always feel like it makes your makes it feel kind of like a, an office building. Like it's a little too reminiscent of fluorescence for me, but they are great for working. Uh, those white lights. Cooler lights, I guess. Um, I haven't done the shadow yet. Part of me is tempted to take this drawing and have the skull kind of float and then do something around it. And since I haven't made up my mind as to whether or not I'll be doing that, um, for now, I'm just leaving it. And we might not get to that on this video. Um, but normally, 
Normally, yeah, by now we would have had our shadow colored in. You'll see, I you can kind of see the lines. I have it traced out where it would be. But I don't know that we're going to do that. <clears throat> yeah, this is so much of drawing this way is just layering and building things up. And I'm just, again, I'm checking against my reference all the time, which has a big glare on the screen right now. I kind of wish it didn't. But. And a phone call coming in. Let's see. Um, so there's a cool. There's a cool transition here that I want to capture. This like yeah, this like corner. I sort of want to highlight that with some lines. Yep, that's what we'll do. And the same thing happens up here. So let's do the red around that. color it in. You guessed it. Just that all of these little transition points where we have this cool like it almost it almost is like reminiscent of like a rocks transition. I mean, and I guess it is. Um, bone bone is basically just a stone that holds you together. Um, and playing up those stony qualities. And to this dust you shall return. Did anybody ever see sunshine? I want to say the director was Danny Boyle. It was his take on a sci-fi. There's a lot of bad science in it, actually, but um, it has kind of a fun, dramatic line. Into this dust we shall return. It's a Journey to the Sun movie. Which is... If I learned anything from it, it's that, like, wow, you don't really want to fly a spaceship into the sun. But it reminds me of an old joke that my dad used to tell where they were NASA's putting out this, you know, this idea to the US government, like, oh, we have this plan, we're gonna head to the sun, and the government official says, Well like, isn't it too hot? Like, what are you what are you gonna how are you gonna make that work? And the NASA rep says, Well, we thought of that, but we'll be going at night. Anyway, they don't go at night in that film. Looking for more of those cool little transition moments. I think we're going to make this one.
slowly and surely. So let's bring some of that highlight up here. Yes. Create that nice round. And at some point, that highlight stops being so bright. And this is where toned paper can be pretty nice. Um, so I don't really have to use any color over here. I can just kind of draw that in with the eraser and then use the brighter stuff where it needs to be brighter. But um, I have like a little stumpy. I, I recommend getting one. These are pretty dang cheap, these little pencil extenders. Um, and if you don't like throwing away stumpy pencils, I know I don't. I'd rather use them. But we haven't gotten any white in here yet. And so we're going to bring a little white in. Just to sort of bring the balance. And something we haven't done yet, but I think we're going to go ahead and do. Do we have time for this? Am I going to regret this? Yeah, we have time. I'm going to bring in some white chalky bits. I think I should have done this before. No, it's not white, pardon me. Pale yellow. It's a pale yellow. I'm just kind of scribbling it in because I'm going to be rubbing it in here in a second. It won't be quite as intense as it is right now. And I don't know if I have a stump with this color on it, so... Well, I have a stump that has it on one side. We're not going to do that. We're just going to use a paper towel. This is just nice to kind of, again, we're just trying to create that separation between the paper. Um, and the foreground. I just want the skull to be... a different color. Now you might notice that the pastel actually does go over colored pencil. Um, if it's the soft sticks. The sticks go over colored pencil pretty well. It's mostly just pastel pencils that do not go over uh, colored pencil like at all. They just won't. They just dig their heels in and say no. Yeah, like that. See, I can't even, it won't even take, so. Um... And that's fine, because we can just come in with this. But, then, you know, again, we're just squinting to see what our brightest brights are, because those should all share a color.
let's just get a little weird. I'm gonna throw in some hard yellow. Yeah, see, that's, I think, definitely what we want to have a little bit of in here. Um, and I'm adding that in part because I just wanted to see, I don't know, I guess I just a little more visual interest. Um, the purple and the red were fine, but I just want more than that. Um, and it will give me a kind of a nice, like if I want to bring something forward, but without making it too bright. Um, the hope is that the yellow will be a pretty good fit for that. Oh, and this little thing, um, there used to be a company called Tough Stuff that made something like this. It's called Mono, and it's, a, it's basically a teeny tiny eraser, like a mechanical pencil um, eraser. And it's just great for carving out itty bitty little details. Um, must have drawing utensils, especially if you use graphite. Uh, I think you really, really want one of those. Um, other, the only other way to get that effect, I suppose, is either very careful use of a fatter eraser or um, um, kneaded erasers can kind of create that effect. This needs to get way darker right here. Yeah, it won't be finishing this, even with the jump start, but... We got pretty far. Um, certainly, uh, you can kind of see the direction I'm heading. Um, I don't know if I'll finish this today, or maybe we can come back to it sometime, maybe next week. Um, time will tell. We have four minutes though, so not not giving up. But I just there's like I'm realizing there's a bunch of stuff I want to do to this still. Actually, while we're at it and we're getting a little crazy, I'm going to throw a little blue. A little blue over here. And now that I've added that blue there, I kind of have to start adding it a little bit everywhere. Especially everything that's facing that side. The idea being that the light the, uh, the, uh, the little bit of light, and there is a little bit, um, the little bit of light that's being caught on that far left side has a blue tint to it. Um, so then anytime I have a plane kind of curving that way, I'm going to want to try and at least catch in the brighter spots of that a little bit of that blue. Um, yeah, just a little bit. And so that'll also happen up here. But having that yellow in the mid-tone and then the blue on the left side, I think is going to really help create that sort of round quality that we want. You know, uh, monks in the Middle Ages used to keep skulls on their desks to remind them of their mortality. I think a Drawing of a pink skull kind of has that same effect. Humbling. Two minutes left. Okay. 
you and then break out the uh what was this one called purplish red <laughs> what a name um but this has been artful connections a semi-instructional artful connections um, and I have been Jonathan Fusco. And yeah, y'all, this, this drawing will eventually get finished. I might, um, keep working on it, uh, today, or I might just save it for next week and we can kind of come back to it and see, um, uh, if we can't talk a little bit about finishing a drawing like this. Um... But I can't thank you enough for joining me today. I hope everybody's staying safe out there and giving themselves the room and space they need to be healthy. And just like all this boundary that I'm drawing right here, establishing boundaries. Happy Monday. Take care, everybody.